Have you ever spent hours and hours creating content, especially content that's meant to get people to sign up to a list or buy something? And then you started to wonder whether it's really truly resonating with your audience. Is it the most effective image or headline or copy that's going to attract the people you really want to attract? What if you could get instant feedback to make sure you are on the right track? Or just to put it another way, how can you get feedback so that you can make better decisions about your content, your titles, thumbnails, images, and website copy? Today, we're diving into the tricky balancing act of getting people to give you feedback about the content that you're creating and how to get that feedback quickly enough to use it while it's still relevant. Now, I say tricky balancing act because you're asking people to do something for you without it necessarily giving them any benefit. So it can actually be really hard to get people to respond at all. And anyone who's ever tried to get people to fill out a survey will know what I'm talking about. Welcome to the Online Business Launchpad Podcast. I'm Trudy Rankin, and I bring you stories, tips, and advice from online entrepreneurs and business owners who've overcome problems and challenges to reach their level of success. I've been running my own online business for nine years now with more than a few twists and turns as I've overcome challenges to achieve my goals. And because of what I've learned, I've become passionate about helping busy online business owners like you hit your goals without burning out. I've used my experience and the experience of others to help hundreds of people grow their online business. And one of my greatest joys is working with people who, because of life circumstances, need a flexible work from home or work from anywhere option that helps them pay the bills or even just gives them a break from their daily grind. My mission is simple. I want to help you solve the challenges that you face as an online business owner so that you can have more time and money for yourself and your family and more choices in how you live your life. So if you're ready to get stuck into online business building and learn how to quickly get really good usable feedback, stick around and we'll get cracking. Now, not too long ago, I was putting together a lead magnet and I couldn't decide which hero image to use on the front. Now, I knew the image was super important because it's the first thing that people see and I wanted to make a great impression. However, if you're a longtime listener to this podcast, you'll know that creating amazing graphics or picking just the right image that conveys just the right message is not my strong suit. Now, I have learned a ton over the years and I am getting better at it, but it's still not something that I feel all that confident about. So I knew that in order to get just the right image, I'd either have to do some A-B testing, which would get a bit complicated to set up, and then it would have taken more time than I had to get the answers, or I could just reach out and straight up ask people what they thought. But there's more than one way to ask people what they think, and some of those ways are more successful than others. So I wanted to share some of those ways of asking for feedback with you and talk a bit about the pros and cons. And then I'll tell you what I actually did to quickly get some incredibly useful and helpful insights. Now, depending on your preferences or how comfortable you are interacting with people online, one or more of the following might be something new that you can try for yourself, because I'm quite sure you will have already had a crack at asking for feedback at some stage in your business journey. And I hope you always get good responses when you ask, but my bet is that more often than not, you get crickets. So let's take a look at some of the different ways you can go about asking for and getting good feedback about the content you're creating. So for many people, especially people just getting started with their business, their family is the go-to place for feedback, at least at first. However, unless you're super lucky and one of your tribe has a really good eye or ear for knowing what's good, you're likely to get conflicting responses. You know, someone, usually your mother, will think anything you've done is lovely and worthy of merit. And then there's the family members who don't get what you're trying to do. And so everything you're working on is seen through a haze of suspicion, including the content you're wanting feedback on. Plus, it doesn't take long to burn through your family's tolerance levels when you're always asking them to comment on something. So the next level up from family is friends. I was reading an article from Copy Blogger recently about how to write headlines that make people click. And they suggested that you pre-test your headlines, or it could be any other kind of content, 
by texting your friends or dropping it into a group, for example, Slack or Discord. And in this particular article, they mention a free Discord group that allows people to ask and provide feedback on members' thumbnails and titles. And I'll put that link in the show notes. And in terms of the different types of groups that you can ask for feedback on, it doesn't have to be limited to Discord or Slack or Reddit. You can also reach out to social media platforms like Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram. And you can use a straight up text post with a nice image, or you can use the polling functionality that's built into these platforms. Now, if, and that's the million dollar question, your audience is active and engaged, you may get some feedback straight away or maybe within a few hours. However, unless your community is super active and you get a lot of shares and engagements, it doesn't take very many hours before your request for feedback is buried under all the other posts people are seeing in their feeds. And if you don't have an active, engaged community of followers, it's highly likely that you'll just get back crickets. No responses at all whatsoever, and that can be super disheartening. So the next level up is what I'd call a ready-made feedback group, or in other words, a community that you're part of. Now that community might be on Facebook or LinkedIn or Discord, or it might be a community that's outside of the typical social media platforms. Now, I have often reached out to both my own online business liftoff community and Pat Flynn's SPI Pro community that I'm part of, and I'll ask for feedback and I will usually get back a fairly good response. However, sometimes it can take a while for the responses to arrive back. If someone hasn't seen my post or they're away on holiday or they're just super busy, they might not be able to respond for several days. And the same is true for mastermind groups or even if you have accountability partners. You know they'll do their best for you and and try to give feedback, but it's not always as fast as you'd like. And also, those people, as committed as they are to your success, don't always have the skills needed to give you the kind of feedback you need about your content. So it can be a bit hit and miss way of getting feedback that's both helpful and timely. Worth trying, but just knowing that there's some cons to it, the whole thing. It can, can has some problems in terms of the way you might get your feedback and the time that you get your feedback. So the next option might be to reach out to your audience. Now you can either do that by emailing them or by asking them to jump on a Zoom call, getting their feedback directly. Both ways can be a great option for getting a bit more into the detail of why people think the way they think about your content. And that can be super helpful. But once again though, if you don't have an email list or the people on your list aren't responsive, you run the risk of yet again, getting back crickets. Um, or of only getting one or two responses, which which is good to get the responses, but it might end up giving you a false positive or a false negative in terms of whether the content you're testing needs improving and by how much, or by how people might interact with your content for real. With website content, there are a few tools out there that show you what people are actually doing. I use Hotjar, which makes little screen capture video recordings that show where people are going in what order they do it and what they're doing when they get there. And trust me, there is nothing quite so enlightening as to see a cursor repeatedly coming back and back to a single place on a page and try to click on something that's not clickable. It's like they wanted or expected to be able to do something and then they're really cross. It's not working the way they wanted. I call it rage clicking. And when I see it, I typically drop everything I'm doing and I just go fix it so that it does click. And of course, Hotjar has other features as well. You can run little pop-up polls or ask a simple question. It is a great feature, but it's also a numbers game because not every visitor to your website is going to answer your question. So you've got to have a fair bit of traffic before you're going to get the feedback you need, which can take time and time that you might not have, which I personally find frustrating. So I've been in search of better options. Now, a few months ago, I interviewed Justin Chen, who's the co-founder of PicFu, for this podcast. It's episode 168, and I'll put the link in the show notes. And in the interview, he shared some fascinating insights on how to get real, actionable feedback really quickly. After the interview with Justin, I decided to try PicFu myself. It sounded really amazing. So I signed up for a free account, which gave me access to one short poll. And I answered a couple of questions, uploaded my photos, and then watched a three-minute video on how to use the platform. And by the time I'd finished the video, the responses to the poll had already started to come in. And 10 minutes later, I clicked on the go to report button and eagerly scrolled through the results. It was super highly informative, even for such a simple poll. 
And then, of course, I simply forgot about it. I just got busy, and I didn't even think about going back to use the platform after that until I was working on that lead magnet I was telling you about earlier. And I decided to have another crack at using PicFu, but this time in earnest. So I chose a poll that was basically uh, rate this image on a scale of one to five, what would you improve type of poll. And it did have a cost associated with it, but I thought it would be worth it if I could get some good feedback and get that feedback pretty quick. So I uploaded the image, I gave it a bit of context around what the image was for, who it was for, and what kind of feedback I was looking for, and then I hit go. And by the time I'd gone off and made myself a cup of chili hot chocolate, I was already starting to get responses, and they were thoughtful, useful responses. So helpful that I felt that it was worth every single cent that I paid. Because that feedback helped me choose better images and understand what resonates with my audience. I didn't have to guess anymore or rely on my still developing sense of what's an effective graphic or image and what's not. So it's definitely a service I'll be using again. PicFu can help with quite a few different things. For example, website images, email subject lines, social media thumbnails, product names, and and more. Um, Now, PicFu is incredibly cost-effective, especially considering the quality of feedback that you get. It's a small investment that can save you a lot of time and help you make better decisions. So if you want to quickly get usable, actionable feedback for your content, you know, give PicFu a try. I'd love it if you'd be willing to use my affiliate link, which is onlinebusinessliftoff.com forward slash PicFu. So that's spelled P-I-C-K-F-U. So onlinebusinessliftoff.com forward slash PicFu. Now, if you do use it, you'll get 50% off of your first poll, and I will receive a small commission at no extra cost to you, for which I thank you, because it helps me keep on sharing the things I've learned so that you can avoid some of the time and money sucks that can trip you up. But even if you don't use my link, here are some hints to get the most out of signing up for PicFu so that you can get quick, usable feedback on your content, whatever it is. So... First, be really clear about who your content's for and how they're going to benefit it. And then what you want to learn about your content by asking for feedback, how you want the feedback to be delivered to you, and what you'll do with the feedback when you get it. Then, once you've signed up and you've created your PicFu account, have a look at the different types of polls that are available. Make a note of the ones that you think would be the most useful in achieving the goals you set out for your content. And the different types that they have, um, I'll just quickly just run through them. The first one is head-to-head, and this is where respondents pick their favorite between two options, and they leave a comment explaining their choice. The second one's round-robin, where respondents choose between pairs of options across multiple rounds, So, and they leave a comment for each vote every time, and so you can use three to eight text, image, video, or audio options. Or if you want to use a ranking poll, basically respondents rank all the options in order of preference and leave a comment explaining their ranking. Uh, and then you've got something called star rating. This is where respondents will score your question or your asset on a five point scale and leave a comment explaining their score. Then you've got open ended. Respondents will review your question and answer with a very detailed comment. Or you can use something called a click test where respondents will click on your image to generate an interaction heat map and then comment explaining why they've clicked. So have a look at the different types of options that there are, make your choice, then provide the information required so that people can give you feedback, hit go, and then wait for the feedback to roll in. It's as simple and as useful as that. Now, I hope that's been helpful. I'll put the link in the show notes, but here it is again. Go to onlinebusinessliftoff.com forward slash PicFu. Once again, that's onlinebusinessliftoff.com forward slash P-I-C-K-F-U. And may you get lots of truly helpful feedback. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Online Business Launchpad podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave an honest review and subscribe. It helps others know if this podcast will help them too. And until next time, keep growing your business and never, ever give up on your dreams. See you next time around. <music>